Today I'm gonna to share with you six very practical things that you can do starting today to help get through these very uncertain times. These are things that will help you, that you can share with your family, and you can all really not just survive, but thrive during these times of uncertainty. They're great habits that you can carry through the rest of your life, and let's get started. The first and maybe the most important thing is the practice of gratitude every morning. I know that's going to sound different, strange, maybe, but when I work with my business clients, that is one of the first things that we have our entrepreneurs do is wake up every morning, get a yellow pad of paper, and to write down five things or people or places in your life for which you are truly grateful, truly grateful. And as you write them down to consider each one, take a couple of minutes and think about each person or place or thing with your fond memories of them and just allow yourself to soak in that for a few minutes. Thank God for them. Thank God for those blessings. Start your day with gratitude. This is one of the most important things that you can do to begin the day. And then it sets your brain for the rest of the day. But also, end your day with celebrating victories. Whatever victories you had that day, whatever small victories or big victories, celebrate them at the end of the day. I got this done today. I got that done today. This went well today. I talked to this person today. Whatever it might be, celebrate your victories at the end of the day as you begin each day with the practice of gratitude. Stay informed, but not obsessively so. Remember, the business model of network news is all based on getting the amygdala in your brain all fired up. The more fired up you are, the more anxiety you have, the more stress you feel, the more fear you feel, the more you are going to tune into the news and the more they get your eyes watching their program, the more they can charge the sponsors of the commercials during that hour, half an hour period of time. So you want to stay informed, but not obsess over it and not just stick to one channel because that will feed right into the anxiety and the fear. Read widely. That's fine. Read widely, but... Don't allow yourself to get real spun up because of the evening news. We always want to think in terms of preparation, not panic. I understand that fear can creep in at times like this, and the stress, the anxiety, the uncertainty of these times can actually cause people fear. But we don't want to panic about what's going on at all, and we have no idea how long this is going to last. Two weeks, two months, we, we just don't know. It's the uncertainty that creates so much stress within people. So we want to think of the phrase preparation, not panic. Make sure you have what you need to get through the next two weeks or so. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare when you're going to go out of the house. Prepare, don't panic. Another thing to add to this is the whole idea of knowing what you can control and what you cannot control. So I often have clients take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. Left-hand side is things you cannot control. Make a list. Right-hand side, things you can control. Make a list of the things you can control. In case you're having trouble coming up with those ideas of the things you can control, here are some things, in fact, you can control. You can manage these things. One is social distancing. You can do that. You can avoid crowds. You don't have to go to that party. You, you really don't have to. You can avoid crowds. You can do the social distancing thing like all the important people in the country want us to do. We can do that. We can wash our hands. I wash my hands a lot. That's all right. <laughs> it is? I, I wash my hands all the time. There's a lot of germs out there. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't worry about that one. We can do that. In fact, we can do that twice an hour. We can wash our hands for 20 seconds. Wash your hands while you are singing happy birthday. Whatever it might be, 
we can all wash our hands and we can wear a mask. It, it's probably more important than you're giving it credit for. So you can wear a mask when you go to the grocery store, when you go into a place where there will be other people. You can and you should wear a mask, both for you as well as for the other people. You can sleep eight hours. This is really important to do. If you can set up your schedule so that you can sleep eight hours a night, please do that. I know some of you think you only need six hours to function well. You only need six and a half hours to function well. Whatever, you need eight hours of sleep to function well. Your brain wants that. Do your very best to stay in touch with people. Use Zoom, FaceTime, telephone. Remember that? I'm old school. We can call people, text people. It's great to see them face to face, though. And we are just discovering Zoom. We had a, a an Easter day, an Easter morning with family from all over the country. There were 35 of us on a Zoom call, a Zoom meeting. And it was a wonderful time. Do your best to stay in touch with people, people that are important to you, family and friends. Do your best to stay in touch with them. Also, your neighbors. Talk to the people who live next door. See how they're doing. You know that couple down the street? See if they have groceries. Just check in with people. Do the best you can to maintain contact with people, even if it's virtual. You want to exercise? I would recommend 20 minutes of walking like you are late for work. That's all it takes to change the way the brain's working for about the next six to eight hours. If you want to go jog a mile, that's fine. A couple of miles, that's great. But at least 20 minutes like you're late for work really helps the brain to adjust to stressful situations. And then finally, eat really well. Eat like you're a professional athlete. You don't have to eat like, hey, look, 10 minutes has gone by. I'm hungry again. You don't have to do that while you're at home. Now, I don't care whether you do something at one end that's kind of extreme, a ketogenic diet, that's my favorite, or at the other end of the scale, a vegan diet, which is like the polar opposite, right? I mean, it's the opposite of a ketogenic eating program, more or less. But both of them are clean eating, clean you're not eating foods that have a lot of additives or made with chemicals or whatever. They're clean. So one of the things you can do, first, pick one of those or something like that. Buy a book, read about it, watch the YouTube videos about it. All of that's good. But look at the label, the ingredients label, on what it is you're about to eat. And as you look at that ingredients label on what it is you're about to eat, if you cannot pronounce the words in that ingredients list, just don't eat it. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. This could be a great time to listen to that book or read that book that you've been putting off, but you know it would be fun to look at. Audiobooks are great. I use them when I go out jogging. Get the book, the hard copy book. That's great because it's always nice to hold whatever it is you're going to read. But find that book that's interesting, inspiring, brings joy to you. It's devotional. So Grab a book that you would enjoy, share it with your family perhaps, and this is a great time for that.